Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is basically weight distributions. Uh, we won't do this in great detail, but uh, I'll point out. I'll point out some uses for it, and there's one very very interesting property uh, that connects weight distributions of the code and its dual. So that will be the main uh, main result that we'll look at. Maybe we can prove it today, maybe not, but. Uh, in general, I'll, I'll point out why weight distributions are nice. Okay, so so let's uh, let's begin with uh, C, which is an NK binary code. Okay, I'll denote by A sub I number of code words in C. Code words of C with weight. If you want a very uh, mathematical looking kind of notation, so we say size of the set C in C such that C equals Okay, so this is a sub i. Okay, so you might wonder what's the what's what's nice about weight distribution. So, so if you look at uh, binary codes, linear binary codes, weight distribution kind of tells you what all the code words that are close to a particular code word. Okay, so if we take one code word, okay, so if we take one code word, which may be denote like the uh, star, okay, so if we denote one code word, okay, then uh, okay, so 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 if I ask the question, uh, how many code words are there at a distance one from it? Okay, there will be. I mean, how many vectors are there at a distance one from it? That will be n right there will be n vectors that are distance n from it from one from it yes okay, so i think this didn't come out quite as well as i like so let me draw it again so, okay so that's my code word so now i want to ask the question how many how many code words are there a distance say i from it okay so a distance one from it there are n vectors but not all of them will be code words right but if i tell you that a1 is say 2 then out of the n vectors that are a distance one from it, two of them are code words. How do I know that? Okay, suppose this is a code word, and suppose I tell you a one plus two, let's say, so for example. Okay, so for example, then out of all the n vectors that are a distance one from it, two of them will be valid code words of the code. How do I know that? Yeah, so you take the two code words of weight i and then add them to c. Uh, weight 1, I'm sorry, it means a1 equals 2 means there are two code words of weight 1. You take those two code words of weight 1 and add it to the C, you will get what? Two other guys, which are here. Okay. So, in a way, this weight distribution tells you how many code words are a certain distance away from a given code word. Okay. So, that also tells you how many, how many ways you can go wrong when you make an error. Okay. So, there are so many, so there are so many code words near you. By if the channel adds errors, you can somehow get close to so many of these other code words. Okay, so the weight distributions are useful in computing exact expressions for probability of block error, probability of bit error, and all that. Okay, so that's one way in which you can use it. Okay, and uh, there are lots of simple results you can talk about weight distributions. So I'll write them down. You'll see some of them are very simple, and they tell you uh, something nice about it. Okay, so the first result is that a zero, one to a zero. One right, so any linear block binary code will have the all zero code word, and that all zero code word has weight zero. So a zero will be one. Okay, and then we can say that a i will be zero for i from one to d minus one. Okay, so that's the other result you can say. Okay, so from a d onwards it will be non-zero, and it will continue to be non-zero in various different ways. It is difficult to predict what the weight distribution will be. Okay, so this is how the weight distribution will look. So let's take some very simple examples, and then figure out what the weight distribution will be. Okay, so if you take, let's say, the n comma one repetition code. Okay, it has only two code words, and one code word has weight zero, another code word has weight n. Okay, so you can say a zero will be equal to one, a n will be one. Okay, another quick property of the code words. Summation a i equals zero to n will be what? 
two parts here, right? The total number of four. So that's the other part. So that's the quick result you have. So there are only two four words, so that's done. Okay, that's the first result. Uh, second result is for G1, comma n minus one T1 will be four. What can we say about this guy? Yeah, so A two I is going to be equal to N choose two above okay? and that will be true for I equal to zero one to what? N by two, like floor of N by two. Okay? Right? And we know that if you add up all these guys together, you will get uh, 2 power n minus 1 and that will be fine. So that's how it is. Okay, so there are other codes we can look at. So let's look at some arbitrary code. Let's say a code with parity check matrix 1010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010
not really self fuel the way i written it down so you can you can do some manipulation too but anyway so that's the that's the right distribution this is how we go about finding it for the code and its dual so even here for instance this was the this is a code and this is dual right so we can do prime if you like anyway so that's that's the uh, that's the result and uh, and and it's it's very common to write instead of instead of a1 a2 a3 like that and as a vector people usually write it as coefficients of polynomial okay so it's very common to do that so that's called the weight distribution polynomial okay and the notation so let me let me define that it's actually mostly jargon but still uh, it gives a nice uh, it gives nice results okay so w c of x comma y basically summation a i x power 1 minus i y power i okay, i goes from 0 to 1 okay the weight distribution polynomial for a code is basically a polynomial in x and y there are two variables here not just x two variables x and y and it is basically coefficient is a i the powers are x power n minus i y power i okay so you can rightfully ask why do you need two variables? Why is it all n minus i, y power i? It doesn't really have any any further information than just the information in AI. Okay, what's the point and all these things? It turns out there are transformations of this two-variable polynomial which are interesting. In particular, there's a linear transformation which will take you from this polynomial to the dual state distribution polynomial. Okay, so that's a very powerful result. Okay, so that's called the McWilliams identity. So we will see that hopefully today or tomorrow. But that's the main idea. That's why this two-variable thing is very useful. Okay, so that's the point to it. We'll come to that soon. Okay, but let me write this in so many different ways for you, just to see, uh, just to see how it works. Okay, so the weight distribution polynomial can also be written in this following form. Okay, summation over all the code words in C, x power n minus weight of C, y power weight. You see why this is equivalent to the previous thing? Okay, right. Every time the weight of the code word is i, I will get a x power n minus i y, by y power i term. Okay, and how many of them do I have? I have a, a sub i, so it's equivalent to that. Both of these are exactly the same. Okay, so this is also a popular way in which uh, this, this equation is written. Is it okay? Okay. So let's go back to our examples and figure out what the polynomial is. For so repetition code, we saw that a0 was 1 and an was 1. There's nothing else in between. So the weight distribution polynomial is going to be what? x power n plus y power n. But okay, and for the even weight code, so C is equal to C. So C part, okay, n comma n minus one, even weight code. What is W C part? X comma Y. It's going to be summation. What? Yeah. n choose two y x power n minus two y y power two y. I will have like to go from zero one two so until floor of n by two. Right. So another way to write it is basically instead of writing it like this, I can also do this. Right. For this for this guy, in this case, summation over i even n choose y x power n minus i, y power i. It's the same as that. Instead of going 2i, 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 I'm just replacing it as i. Okay? Do you know of any other formula for this? Summation. Oh, there's one more way to get it. So one, one way to get it is to say, I do this, and then what? Subtract. Summation. What summation? So basically, x minus y, y power n. This will give you this formula, right? By 2, yeah, this is right. 
Okay, so there's a direct way to do this. Think about it. So x plus y whole power n is summation over all i n choose i x power i x power n minus i y power i x plus okay. That should be good. Okay. All right. So x minus y is the same as that except that we have a minus one power i. Okay. So all the odd terms will cancel in the summation. All the even terms will double in the summation. So you divide by two, you go back to this expression. Okay. So you notice here curiously, if you replace x by x plus y and y by x minus y, you go from the weight distribution polynomial of the original code to that of the dual. Okay. And this turns out as a universal fact. For any any code, this is true. Okay. For the for the so repetition and single even weight code, it's, it seems like a very trivial result, but it's true for any code. Okay, for any code, you can do this. Okay, so I, I, will, I will prove that. I'm not a true net. Prove it. It's just it's it's a, it's a true statement. Okay, but there's also a constant factor, and that will basically be the number of code words in the original code. Okay, so you have divided by the number of code words in the original code, you get that. Okay, so that's that's it's a very non-trivial, interesting little fact that you can go from the weight distribution of the code to its dual. By simply doing a substitution in this polynomial. Okay, so that's a very powerful. Uh, okay, so let's do one more example here, just to see uh, how it works. So for this, I'm going to use the 743 Hamming code. Okay, so what's the 743 Hamming code? So we take the parity check matrix. Uh, Take two, so like zero, one, one, uh, zero, one, 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 zero, one. Suppose you take it in this form. Okay. So let's try and figure out weight distribution. Okay. So a zero will be one. Okay. A one and a two are going to be zero. What is a three? Let me see. Is there any smart answer out there? Okay, so if you notice, you'll see a7 will be one here. Okay, what is a7 being one? The all ones is a valid code word. Okay, so if I find a3, okay, if a3 is some x, okay, a4 will also be the same x. Okay, so 2x plus 2 has to be equal to. See, and there cannot be any a1, a2, which means a5 and a6 is also not there. Okay, so because a1 and a2 are there. 5 and 6 will also be there, but that you know is not there because 7 is the code word. So only thing is a3 and a4, and if a3 is x, a4 will also be x. So 2x plus 2 has to be equal to 16, so x has to be equal to 7. Okay, so from there you can conclude a3 will be 7 and a4 will be 7. Okay? So this is a smart little trick for small codes to figure out some things. It won't work for very, very too many codes. For simple codes, if you want to find out explicitly what the weight distribution is, even for the 6-3 code that we had before, we could have used this trick, but Let's see. I mean, for one or one suppose it's good to do it the hard way, and then you see that. Okay. So okay. So this is a nice little trick you can pull for the Hamming code. So what happens to the weight distribution polynomial? So if you want the weight distribution polynomial for the Hamming code, so C is the seven four three Hamming code. See the weight distribution of x y. Basically, uh, x power seven, right, corresponding to the zero point, right? and then seven x power four y power three plus seven x power three y power four plus y power seven. Okay, so 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 what's the dual of the Hamming code? It's a seven three four code, but we know that the dual of the Hamming code is obtained from the Reed Miller code, right? So it has a very specific structure. So in fact, you can show the dual of the Hamming code has the weight zero code word, and then I think. All the remaining code words will have weight four. Okay, so I think there is some such uh, property for the dual of the seven seven four three Hamming code. But anyway, so something like that is true for the weight distribution of the dual. So if you want, you can go back and check this. Okay. 
Okay. So each of the three rows have weight 4. Do any combination, what happens? You still get weight 4. Right? This plus this is weight 4. This plus this is again weight 4. This plus this is also weight 4. Okay. Then you add all the three also, you get weight 4. Okay. All right. So you, you, the dual code has just One code word of weight uh, zero, and then it has seven code words of weight four. Okay, so that's the that's the nice thing about the dual. And in fact, even here it's, it's a little bit more painful to check. Even here, the identity I told you before is true. Okay, instead of x, if you put x plus y, instead of y, if you put x minus y, and then you have to divide by sixteen because that's the number of code words in the Hamming code. You will go from here to here. Okay. Put x equals x plus y, y equals x minus y, divide by 16. Okay, you can try this if you like. You will go from the whole distribution of the code to that of its Okay, So it is a powerful little idea to go from the code word to its dual. And uh, we are going to prove that, uh, we will start the proof in this class maybe Maybe we can finish it. We'll see. If we don't, we'll come back and look at it more. Okay. So that's the that's the idea. Is that okay? So try this if you have some time. It's a bit of an interesting little exercise. Okay. So in general, what is true is what's known as Napoleon's identity. Can be succinctly stated as follows. The weight distribution of the dual is 1 by size of the curve, weight distribution of the curve, the best weight place by x plus y and the weight place by x minus y. Okay. There are several other forms for it. If you if you use this y prime x power n minus i y power i, it is going to be equal to 1 by size c, the i x plus y or n minus i. Okay, this is the other other form for identity. The other form is summation u in the code in the dual uh, x power n minus y of u. Okay, maybe I'll put a vector here. Y power y of u. It's the same as one over size of c summation over u in the code c x plus y y power n minus y to u x minus y power y to q. Okay, so these are the three different forms in which you can write the Napoleon's identity depending on what you like one form might appeal to you more than the other in some, some cases some of them are better. Okay, so essentially if you look at something like this the relationship is, is quite clear. Okay, so, so you have remember these are both homogeneous polynomials, all of them are degree n, but the power of y goes from y power 0 to y power n. Okay? So once you equate the coefficients on both sides, you essentially get linear relationships between the ai primes and ai. Okay? So the ai prime is obtained by a transformation of y with some linear relationship. Okay? So it is some simple little transformation that you can go from 1 to 4. Okay? So that is the idea of uh, this uh, fantastic result. This is a quite non trivial result. It is very interesting also that the weight distribution of the dual is actually controlled by the weight distribution of the original code. Okay, so that is true. Otherwise. Okay, so we are going to use this in the proof. This is the form that we will use for the proof. Okay, the proof can be done in so many different ways, but I am going to use a very uh, some elementary, elementary ideas. There are also more general uh, group theoretic notions which are used. Uh, to describe the proof in simple language. Okay, so depending on mathematical sophistication, you can do it in various different ways. So what I am going to do is very elementary. So first property, uh, there is a lemma that is used to the proof here. It is a cute little lemma. If you have a summation like this, minus 1 over u bar v. Okay, u bar v is a dark product between u and v. u and v are all uh, binary vectors. Okay, these are all one. Okay, I am just sticking to binary. If you add it up over all u and c, what do you think will happen? 
okay, v is an arbitrary vector. I am going to take minus 1 power u dot v. I am going to add over all u and c. Okay, so it turns out there are only two different things that can happen. Either v is in the dual of the code. If v is in the dual of the code, what happens to u dot v for every u? It is 0. So minus 1 plus 0 will always be 1. You will get size of c. Okay. This is if v is in the dual. If v is not in the dual, what do you think will happen? Can you guess? Based on similar results that you have seen in so many different contexts, v is not in the dual, you take u dot v for all u and c, what do you think will happen? You will get 0 and 1. How often do you get 0? How often do you get 1? It is going to be equally often. So, what will happen to the summation? It will go to 0. Okay, so, this is the main lemma that is used in the proof. Okay. So, minus 1 power u dot v okay, has a very nice behavior when summed up over all u's in the code. Okay. Either v is in the dual or v is not. If v is in the dual, you get size of c. If v is not in the dual, you simply get c. Because u dot v will take values 0 and 1 equally often. Okay. So, there are various ways to prove such results. Okay. So, there is one slick concept based method which I can quickly prove. But I am not going to do it. I will just orally prove it for you. Okay. So, you look at all the, the sub code which is such that u dot v is 0. Okay. Fix the v and then look at the sub code of c for, for which u dot v is 0. That will be a sub code. You can show it is a sub code. So, if you add on then you can show it has only one other coset inside C. Okay, so C will have equally uh, equal number of cases. Uh, okay, so there is a proving it. So I am not going to prove this lemma for you. It is a simple end result. Try it. It is easy to do. You can also prove it using so many other ways. Okay, so, but this is one way of proving it. Is that okay? Okay, so if you remember this proof, right? So basically look at this set. Set of all U and C such that u dot v is 0. Okay. So, v is in the dual, of course, this is equal to the entire c. Okay. That is easy to show. If v is not in the dual, you can show it has at most one other, only one other coset. Okay. So, this will be a sub code. And then, if u dot v is 1, you take two of them, add it together, you will get u dot v is 0. Right. So, so it works out. Okay. So, this, this set over is a sub code. Okay, so coset and this will have the same size, and there you can conclude big equally often 0 and 1. Okay, so that is the proof, and I am going to skip the, skip the proof for just for uh, sake of time, it is not really very critical, but that is the idea. Okay, there are more generalizations of this result in the group theoretic setting and all that. There is a more generalization of the result, so that is a little bit more sophisticated. You don't need. Okay, so how do we use this? So I am going to start at the left hand side here and I am going to use this result and get a summation over C and then we will see how to get rid of the summation over it. So let's idea. So let's start with uh, so this is uh, proof for the Napoleon's identity. So I'll go through that. So let's look at this summation. Okay, so let's look at this summation. Uh, so what I'm going to do in the first step, it's a little bit not obvious, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead of restricting it to C perp. I am going to take the summation over all binary n tuples. Okay, so I will keep the same thing. Okay. So if I do that, obviously it is not an equality. But to make it an equality, I will use the previous lemma. Okay, so how do I use the previous lemma to make it an equality? Okay, so only when v is in C top, I want this to be non zero. Okay, so what do I do? Inside this, I will put a summation over u in the code word minus 1 power u dot b. Okay, and then of course I have to divide by size of c. 
So you see, it, this is kind of like an inspired uh, manipulation. Of course, only if you know the final result, you can do this manipulation. Okay. So it's, it's fine. I mean, it works out uh, reasonably well. Do you see this? Okay, this, is a, this is an easy enough equality to show. Okay. So I'm going to, instead of adding up only all the code words of the dual, I'll have, add over all the binary vectors. But then how do I enforce that only the code words of the dual play a role? I'll take minus 1 for u dot v, add up over all u and c. Okay, I know only when v is in the dual, this will be non-zero. v is not in the dual, this will go off to zero. Then I'll put a 1 by size of c to normalize that to 1. Okay. Then you interchange the order of the summation here and you'll get closer to the result. Okay, so this is the first step. The next step is to interchange the order of the summation. So when you do that, there's no problem here. Everything is finite. So I can add up any which way I want. So I have 1 by size of c. Sum over u and c. Okay. Minus 1 power. Okay, so I should keep the minus 1 also inside. Summation over v in 0, 1, n. Minus 1 power u dot v x power n minus weight of v y power weight of v. Well, okay. That's the summation. And this is the part, <coughs> this is the part that I have to simplify. Okay. And if I simplify, if the result is true, which I said the result is true, the summation will have to work out to what? x power n minus weight of u times y power weight of u. Right? Yeah, x plus y, sorry, x plus y power n minus weight of u, x minus y power weight of u. Okay, so if everything works out right, the summation has to work out to that. And that's the main uh, point of the result. Okay, so we will show that this summation will simplify to that original result. Okay, so if you want a challenge, try it. Okay, try it overnight. If, uh, the answer will be given tomorrow. Tomorrow I will show you how this simplification is done. If you want to try it, try this. I mean, it is an interesting little proof. It is not very hard, but you have to really work out and see what happens. Okay, expand all these things. Alright, okay, so we will stop here for today. Pick up from here in the next class.